Oldenburg's witty play with scale has been copied everywhere, as here in Soho, New York's fashionable art center of the 80s. We've now reached the point where more people are exposed to art than ever before in history, not only through books, films, museums, but from the everyday artifacts around them in their lives, through advertising, through packaging, through the very clothes that they wear. The distinction between art and commodity is now blurred. So where does the artist go from here? We're looking at the skyline of New York, a sort of mythic image of modernist progress, of endless sense of possibilities opening in front of uh, an early 20th century, sort of drunk on its own sense of growth and power. And what's interesting is that now, for us in the age of postmodernism, this skyline, this sort of mythic uh, field of vision, seems to have receded from our view, or seems to have sort of vanished into a reproduction of itself. Richard Haas here has painted the blank wall of a Soho building precisely to trick us. Postmodernism is a term that architects adopted in the early 70s to describe a kind of building that dropped a veil of neoclassical decoration in front of a traditional box-like structure. This is Michael Graves' Portland building in Oregon, more interested in the building as an image than as a three-dimensional experience. What we're really dealing with in the period in which we live is an extraordinary conformity that despite the seeming pluralism, the seeming diversity, in fact, we are seeing many, many different reflections of the same underlying reality. And it is that underlying reality which seems to me to be at the root of what's happening in the art of our time. It's as though the world has become a kind of huge billboard or an opaque wall of images that separates us as individuals from a nature that might exist behind that wall, but which we cannot penetrate to. Somehow, reality has been swallowed up by a television tube. So this sort of nightmare possibility accounts for absolutely everything that's going on now. Certain artists have dedicated their work to the problem of how to break through this wall, how to put a kind of little crowbar underneath it and try to get some sort of leverage on it, try to make a kind of space between the imitation of the real and the real, or to try to comment on the ways in which we are trapped in this, what we could call Plato's cave, in which what we are looking at is a world of shadows, a world of simulations, rather than a world of real things. Tony Berlant confines a miniature 19th century landscape within the modern contours of hammered metal. Gilbert and George appear in their own paintings, a pair of artists romping through an unreal media world. Postmodern is a new way of saying modernism. This kind of new culture that represents absence of distinction between originality and reproduction. And the idea that you go to the past and quote the past, remake the past in order to say something new. In fact, for today's artists, the problem seems to be, what new is there to say? In a vanitas of style, 
Pat Steer takes the traditional still life genre and fragments her painting into 64 separate frames. The range of styles presents an encapsulated course in the history of Western art. Boldly invoking the classical tradition, Carlo Maria Mariani is painted looking into a celestial mirror. The artist self-consciously winks at his postmodern audience, a public fully aware of the ironies of recycling the heroic past in an unheroic age. Here, Giulio Paulini presents art looking at art two replicas of the most famous of Greek sculptures, the Venus de Milo, mirror each other. Beauty studies beauty in order to develop. The Palais Royal in Paris is an 18th century building that houses part of the French administration. Danielle Buren was asked to make a sculpture for its courtyard that would complete this glorious architectural monument. What he chose to do was to complete it as a ruin, turning the idea of the colonnaded peristyle into the stunted columns from an antique acropolis felled by time. Before this work was installed, De Plateau was blocked by a court injunction. Buren's work became the subject of a memorable cultural battle, as only the French can wage. The conservative newspaper of Paris roared its disapproval, calling the work cultural hooliganism. Ultimately, people were attracted to the new landmark as a congenial place to be. An example of postmodern architecture is this museum in Mönchengladbach, Germany, specifically designed by Ansel Lein to house avant-garde art. References to the Greek citadel, to the skyscraper, and to the cathedral are all successfully combined here. 